Fish Street Gym. Man, what a gym that was. Go up a flight of steps, rickety. Some fighters would get mad at something, bang a hole into the wall. We covered the holes in the wall with uh, show cards. It was really something to see. It was just a, a grimy working place. It had a feel that you can't get anywhere else except in a boxing gym. What you needed to be in the mystery gym was talent to be there, ambition to be somebody, ambition to pay the price, to work hard as hell to be there, and the desire to learn from champions. Because when you went there, you were the champions. If somebody said, round one, they need a middleweight, you can step in there and find yourself fighting the middleweight champion of the world. He might not to sell him, but you could. Nice kid. I mean, he, 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 let me tell you, he wanted to be a fighter. He was in, just walking in the gym. He would light it up. He was that kind of young man. Cassius, how do you feel today? Pretty good. How you doing? I hear you met Don Juan today. How was he? Yeah. He wasn't too friendly. What do you have to say? He didn't even shake my hand. What are you going to do about that? Now you must fall. <laughs> and everybody in the gym loved him. Loved him. Thought that was great. Everybody thought this is our guy. This guy's going to be the guy. Well, Cassius, how do you rate yourself as a fighter? Well, uh, I wouldn't want to do too much bragging about it, but everybody that watches me fight or everybody that has witnessed one of my bouts, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. And the kid didn't have a car. A lot of times he would run across the causeway and come to the South, South Beach. One day the cops stopped him, you know, big skinny kid running across the highway, you know, helter skelter. So I'm Angel so Dundee's fighter. And then they said, uh, they called me up and said, this, I said, yeah, he is. It's a great fighter. You hit him the left up because I thought it was beautiful. Angelo was the perfect trainer for Cassius Clay because he let Cassius be Cassius in and out of the ring. Angelo understood immediately that Cassius did things all wrong from a technical point of view but he could get away with them because of his speed and his reflexes. Well, I'm sure any heavyweight that follows me in the ring for six or seven rounds, he's mine after that, if he's still standing. The newspaper guys at first, his first six fights, they thought he was too awkward, you know, pulled back from punches, fast hands, don't move. They thought, you know, too much. But I said, look, uh, it'll smooth out. One of the issues that the older sports writers had with him was his unorthodox style. He was leaning back and away from punches. Well, everybody knows that somebody just needs to step forward, you're off balance, and, and hit you. He moves around so much that he really didn't get set, but he was usually moving so fast and concentrating on all the razzle-dazzle that he didn't show for quite a while that he could punch. Angelo just tried to build on what Cassius Clay did naturally. I made him feel he innovated everything. Because you, you got to do that with star quality. So I'm just a flunky, you know, I'm there showing him, do this, do that. But it worked. Come out of the, the ring one day. And I said, man, that jab of yours is really snapping that guy's neck back. You know that? You're getting right in the small of his back. You're bending that knee perfect. Next day he would do it. That was a jab, that bip, 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 he threw it like this. He didn't throw a jab like this, he flicked it. He called it snake licking. Bip, bip, and he moved it. And all of a sudden, he stood still, and there went the right hand. And he combined that velocity with the power of a heavyweight, and he created a whole new thing. We've, we never saw an, uh, a heavyweight fighter like that, and we have not since. I mean, the first fights were like exhibitions that were so easy. Oh, well, that bip, 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 finish. I mean, he even took apart Archie Moore, who was a really clever fighter and hard to get out. He knocked him out. But Archie Moore is going around popping off, and he's inventing a lip buttoner for me. See, I've earned a reputation as the Louisville lip. Well, since he's going to invent a punch called the lip buttoner, and I'm the one who usually does the popping off, but he's starting, so I cut this from eight rounds to four rounds. A lot of people, you know, early in his career, they thought he was gay, for Christ's sake. There were so many girls around him, but he would train. He wouldn't mess around. 